I'm Alex Elspach, and this is Kane. And uh, this is our, our uh, project, Darwin OP Drives. Um, so we originally came up with the concept of uh, having a humanoid interact with uh, another vehicle because uh, humanoids, we all know, they're designed in human form, designed to work well in the human environment. And in order for them to fully utilize their potential, we think it's crucial that they can make use of all the tools that uh, us humans use every day. So, uh, why autonomous vehicles? Uh, they, autonomous vehicles, they can go further, faster, they can go over rough terrain. Uh, humanoids have a very difficult time with that. Um, they can carry more equipment. Uh, why autonomy? Uh, you have safety, safety uh, issues that you would deal with with human drivers. You can uh, optimize things such as uh, fuel economy. You can reduce traffic, you can reduce coordination. And also, um, you can have the convenience of a your personal robot chauffeur. Um, the current efforts in uh, uh, autonomous vehicles, um, I'm not sure, well, I'm pretty sure everyone here knows about the new DARPA, new DARPA challenge. We actually worked on this project uh, before we heard about that, but uh, we were pleased to see that um, humanoids were going to be involved in driving cars and things of that nature. Uh, in addition to uh, autonomous cars, there's uh, been the DARPA Grand Challenge and, of course, the Google Autonomous Car. Um, so why have a humanoid drive? Why not just go with an autonomous car? Um, we think that uh, having a humanoid drive really opens up a lot of doors in that you, you don't have a, a specific car that's completely tuned for an environment. Uh, you don't necessarily have a speedster when you really want to go over the, the roughest terrain. Uh, with the humanoid, it's, it's more adaptable. It opens up avenues such as if you want to do some kind of um, uh, some kind of learning done by the, the humanoid rather than just have the, the car itself. And uh, it's, it seems like a much more modular situation. So, a group of time. concept was done on this miniature humanoid. Always prototype on the miniature ones so you don't break your big expensive ones. Um, and we thought with Darwin being kind of the flagship for open source robots, um, humanoid style robots, and the Roomba is also a very well known um, kind of iconic little robot. So we decided to make the car out of a Roomba. So we submitted this video um, for the original uh, Darwin OP challenge. Um, we did line following with a very simple uh, algorithm using only a mechanical interface between Darwin and Roomba. So this creates um, basically steering and pedal is, it has its own controller. This is done in WeBots with a MATLAB controller. And Darwin is doing vision processing. And the only link between them is him steering him pushing the pedal. So as you can see, just as a proof of concept, we did line following. Uh, we also did blob tracking. So then after after we got accepted as a finalist here, we stepped it up to the real thing. We actually bought a Darwin at that point and uh, we had a room of laying around like that. So in this system, as I said, Darwin remains unmodified. He's doing the vision processing on board with his built-in camera. He's steering, and that's the input to the Roomba. And he's putting his foot on the Boolean pedal. We just have a go and stop. The, the uh, iRobot Create, the Roomba, is differential drive. It uses a little Atmel microcontroller. Um, and it has a breakout for digital I.O., uh, analog to digital. And we build it um, with all laser cutting. <coughs> so it was cheap and easy to make, and I think it looks pretty good. We have a potentiometer up front, 
that's um, read the analog in, and that controls um, a proportionate angular velocity, and the gas pedal again is just moving the go and stop. So here's the design in CAD. As I said, we just uh, got it all laser cut. It was, um, worked pretty well the first time, it all snapped together with some glue. And after we got it all together, we dealt with um, some things with the interface between Darwin and Europa. So we used IK to solve, um, solve the steering, so keeping his hands in, in one steering plane. Um, there's PD control on his, uh, on his arm movement, along with um, some low-pass filtering to smooth everything out. And we ended up doing an elastic constraint between his, his hands and the steering wheel so that he can go up and they stretch out. We got way better control without you know, uh, breaking things. Um, and as for vision processing, we're doing road and blob following very simple algorithms just to show off the steering. Um, we're doing HSV color segmentation. We're eroding and dilating just to clean up all the noise we're experiencing. And we're also um, projecting down onto the ground so we know the actual distance of the road as opposed to just you know um, pixel by pixel. And uh, you may be asking, what's next for this kind of uh, research topic? Um, of course, there's the DARPA Grand Challenge, and we're very excited about that. There is also the possibility of, if you do all the research behind getting a humanoid in a car, and you can learn to use all the sensory input, you can possibly use that to help help uh, blind people drive cars. But if you know you can do it, uh, I'm sure a person can do it. <laughs> and also, uh, there's a, our dream goal of having robot chauffeurs in the future. And that's a, that's a presentation. Um, are there any questions? And actually, let's, let's do a demo first and we'll get questions after. So the first set, uh, test we set up was uh, we wanted to make sure we could get the steering down and the, the vision control. Um, so we set up a simple blob tracking. We had a uh, track red. This was uh, the first kind of testing stage we had um, before driving. And uh, once we got all these parameters tuned, we, uh, we wanted to step it up and then actually do some road following. Thank <laughs> you. 